A few years ago, a terrifying photo of a headless dog went viral. It got over 143,000 views and over 3,200 upvotes on Imgur. And people were shocked, frightened, and confused. Now take a close look at this photo. What do you see here? Before we talk about the headless dog, I want you to meet Cooper. Cooper is an American foxhound who was born with a hereditary condition called short spine syndrome, which compressed the dog's spine, so much so it looks like Cooper has virtually no neck. Due to his condition, his mobility is limited, and he can't turn his head to look back. He has to turn his whole body, sort of like Batman. What are you? I'm Batman. Back when Cooper was wandering the woods near Halifax, Virginia for months, it was unclear what his medical condition was. It wasn't until the dog was caught by animal rescuers that it was revealed that Cooper had a rare genetic disease that affects only about 30 dogs worldwide. Well, at least that many cases have been reported. Given the rarity of the condition, scientists are still debating the nature of the syndrome. For a long time, they believed it was a hereditary disease, but there seems to be some connection between the short spine and crossbreeding of closely related species. The vertebrae in the spine are made up of bone and cartilage. In dogs with a short spine, cartilage doesn't turn into bone in the earliest stages of development. Because of this, some of the individual vertebrae come together and fuse, and the dog becomes shorter. The same syndrome occurs in coyotes. How's Cooper feeling? Oh, he's fine. Despite his condition, he's surrounded by the love and care of his owners, and all in all, he's living quite a good life. Now back to the headless dog. Don't think I forgot about it. Actually, the animal in the photo has a head, but no front leg. And yes, it really is a dog that's very busy licking itself. The camera angle is definitely a factor. However, this photo got us thinking, can animals actually live without a head? The question sounds a little absurd, but what's really strange is that the answer is yes, they can. There are some animals that can survive without a head thanks to a unique combination of factors, including their physical structure and nervous system. Of course, there aren't many animals like that, because for most of them, the brainstem plays a crucial role in regulating basic body functions. Many animals simply can't breathe without their head, and their heart stops beating. So who are the lucky ones who can survive decapitation? Chickens have been known to keep flapping their wings and running after losing heads. Decapitation activates nerve endings in the neck and sends electricity through the nerves to the muscles, causing them to move. Although, unless the head is removed below the eyes, the part of the brain that allows the animal to breathe and maintain motor function stays intact. Well, I already told you the story of Mike the chicken in one of our videos. Another animal that can live without a head is the tortoise. Tortoises have a slow metabolism, which helps keep their organs alive for long periods and extend their lives. Also, tortoises require little food and their slow movements don't take much energy. But what about the brain? The thing about tortoises is that they have a very small brain. In fact, some species don't even have that part of the brain we call the hippocampus. This is the area of the brain that controls things like emotions, learning, memory, and spatial navigation. So what do the tortoises have? Mostly the part of the brain called the medial cortex. Because of all this, some species of tortoises rely so little on their brains that they can live without them. In the 17th century, Italian doctor Francesco Reddi removed a tortoise's brain for an experiment. It lived another six months. Reddi then removed the tortoise's entire head. It was a shocking scene. The tortoise stayed alive for almost a month. But the most famous example of tenacity is, of course, cockroaches. They can live for up to two weeks without a head. They don't have a complex system of blood vessels, so when they lose their heads, their necks just clot themselves off and the insects don't bleed to death. Turns out their body's still capable of moving, standing, and responding to external stimuli. A cockroach's head can survive even after being separated from its body, moving its antenna for hours. However, in my opinion, the creepiest story about an animal without a head happened in the USSR. I'm not kidding. It's really creepy. In 1926, Soviet physician Sergei Brukhanenko designed a device known as an autojector, or artificial blood circulation machine. Actually, such a device is designed to keep a person alive if his heart or lungs fail. But Brukhanenko tested it on dogs, more precisely on the dog's head. With a blood supply to the brain, the head reacted to stimuli as it would in life, twitching its ears and eyes in response to light, sound, and touch. 
It even licked a substance off its own nose. But then, of course, it died. Okay, enough creepy stuff for today. Meet Tuna, a Chihuahua Dachshund crossbreed, both a meme and an internet celebrity who's been called the ugliest dog in the world. Well, I don't know, seems like a cute dog to me. Tuna was abandoned by his former owner near San Diego, California, then rescued by his new owner, but suffered an emotional trauma that caused him to crawl on his stomach. What made Tuna popular, however, was the way he looked. He has an overbite with protruding small teeth, big ears, a long wrinkled neck, and a very thin coat. In some spots, the dog looks almost naked. This brought Tuna 2 million subscribers, and their number keeps growing, plus a book and some merch. Reese Witherspoon, Ariana Grande, Hilary Duff, and Lady Gaga can be found among Tuna's followers on social media. And no, the overbite doesn't bother the dog too much, it's just that sometimes Tuna's gums dry out, causing his teeth to protrude, but then again, it brings Tuna even more followers. It gets much weirder when the teeth are located on one's head. This phenomenon was actually observed in a mountain lion. A hunter spotted a young male mountain lion near Preston, a city in southeast Idaho, in late December 2015. The hunter saw the predator attack a dog on private property and then flee into the hills. It took three hours to track the predator and kill it. It was legal, by the way, but the most incredible thing was yet to come. The mountain lion appeared to have fully formed canine teeth and even small whiskers growing out of the fur-covered left side of its forehead. Almost makes it look like Voldemort. It's unclear what caused the unusual growth of the teeth, but state biologists came up with two theories. Perhaps the teeth are the remnants of a conjoined twin which died in the womb but was absorbed by the surviving fetus, or it could be a tumor called a teratoma, a mass filled with teeth, hair, and sometimes even fingers and toes. Such tumors contain tissue found in embryos at an early stage of development, they're usually benign and don't spread to other parts of the body, so the extra teeth probably didn't make the mountain lion particularly uncomfortable. And this is Frank and Louie, a cat with not only two names, but two faces on the same head. When this cat, or should I say cats? Anyway, when Frank and Louie were born, the vet said they just wouldn't live long. Janus cats, named after the two-faced Roman god Janus, usually die very quickly because of congenital defects that prevent them from eating properly. But for reasons unknown, Frank and Louie didn't suffer from any serious diseases and made it into the Guinness Book of World Records in 2012 as the longest-lived Janus cat. Frank and Louie were born with two faces, two mouths, two noses, and three eyes – true, only two eyes can see, the middle one can't even blink – to eat the cats used only one mouth, which was connected to the esophagus, so they didn't have any problems with feeding. The personality of the cats was just great, they loved to cuddle with people. Sadly, Frank and Louie died in 2014 at the age of 15, which is actually a pretty decent age for a cat, especially the one with two faces. The exact reason why there are Janus cats out there is still not clear, but according to experts, it could be attributed to various genetic mechanisms. Although I could explain which genes might cause the appearance of two faces on the same body, I'm not sure if I could explain it in layman's terms. Two faces on the same body could be caused by the Sonic Hedgehog gene family. Does that mean anything to you other than a blue hedgehog? Well, that figures. Along with two-faced cats, there are also two-headed sharks. I agree, it sounds like something straight out of a horror movie, but such creatures are found all over the world from time to time. It's even believed that it became especially common somewhere in the noughties. In 2008, a fisherman named Christian Johnston caught a small blue shark with two heads. In 2013, a group of Floridian fishermen pulled a large bull shark out of the water and a two-headed fetus was found inside it. A few years later, Spanish researchers found an embryo of the species Gallius atlanticus, also with two heads. Of course, such creatures can't survive in the ocean and they die very, very quickly. And you know, in a way, it's a good thing. Some people are frightened even by ordinary sharks, let alone two-headed ones. But why are there suddenly so many two-headed sharks out there? The increased mutation rate in wild sharks can be caused by a number of factors, including viral infections or pollution. Some researchers suggest that overfishing may be the cause, and there's some logic to that. As the shark population declines, its gene pool also shrinks, leading to frequent inbreeding, hence the high risk of transmitting genetic anomalies. However, other scientists believe that the number of two-headed sharks is not actually increasing, so there's no reason to panic. 
It's just that today everyone can take a photo of an unusual find and the number of scientific journals has also increased. Thanks to this, we know about the three-headed frog. In 2004, the creature with six legs stunned even BBC wildlife experts. It looked as if three separate frogs had merged into one, and the scientists could not believe their eyes. Although such a mutation is rare, it's not entirely unheard of. Unfortunately, the three-headed frog was only kept in the container for a few hours before it escaped during another show. The scientists just didn't have time to study the strange animal properly. I gotta say, frogs are basically pretty primitive creatures, and accidentally growing extra limbs is quite common for them. In the mid-1990s, people started noticing too many frogs with extra legs in ponds in the US and Canada. Turned out that these mutations appeared naturally, through the manipulation of the parasites. It was intentionally causing the defects in the frog to make it easier for predators to catch them. Then the parasite itself could continue its life cycle. And now I'm warning you, you're about to see something really scary. When I first saw this, I thought I should call a witcher or an exorcist. Anyway, are you ready? It's a goat with a human face. It was born in an Indian village and its photos quickly went viral after being posted on social media. At first, the locals were confused by the animal's strange appearance and you can understand them. I was actually scared when I saw it. But over time, they got used to it and decided they would worship the goat as an avatar of a god. That's up to them, of course. Experts have suggested that the goat suffers from a rare birth defect known as cyclopia, in which the genes that create facial symmetry under normal circumstances don't work. A fetus with cyclopia doesn't develop two eye cavities, instead forming one central eye cavity, which may contain one oversized eye or two partially fused eyeballs. What exactly causes this defect is unknown. But this condition isn't just found in goats, of course. In 2011, a shark fetus with cyclopia made headlines after it was sliced from its pregnant mother, caught in the Gulf of California. According to the scientists who examined the animal, the one-eyed shark fetus would not have made it if it had been born. Another find like this shocked fishermen in Indonesia when they discovered a rare baby albino shark with one eye in the middle of its head. The baby shark also had cyclopia. Honestly, I don't find one-eyed sharks that scary, and some people even think they're cute. But when it comes to goats, goats might cause mixed feelings. In 2018, a picture of this bizarre-looking mutant goat that was born somewhere in the Middle East was posted online. The goat was even put up for sale. The huge animal has an enormous head which appears to have mutated for unknown reasons. However, the goat itself is clearly not bothered by this condition and looks quite cheerful. Vets say that male goats often have an unusual head structure, though this case is a bit too extreme. The cows with the extra legs may even look cute in their own way, especially when compared to those creepy goats. When a calf with six legs was born on a farm in Switzerland in 2012, the vet was quick to declare the animal wouldn't live long. The calf was named Lily, and the farm owner refused to put her down because she was so full of life. After much thought, it was decided that if Lily remained healthy, she would be allowed to live along with other cows on the farm. True, Lily's extra legs caused a curvature of her spine, which simply made it impossible for her to become a milk cow, but the farmer wasn't bothered by that either. The extra limbs were successfully removed, and Lily recovered quickly enough to start living her happy cow life. What caused Lily to have extra legs was a rare condition known as polymelia. According to a 2002 study, for every 100,000 cattle born in the world, fewer than four are born with extra limbs. But the phenomenon is found everywhere, in buffalo, chickens, frogs, even humans. The condition is not lethal, although giving birth to offspring with extra limbs can be more difficult. When it comes to pets, the extra limbs can be surgically removed, and it'll be a good thing for them. With humans, as you can imagine, things get much more complicated. But sometimes, unusual changes to animals happen due to common scoliosis. No, really, it does very strange things to them. And no, scoliosis doesn't happen to humans only. In general, it's a malformation of the musculoskeletal system which deforms the spine. Hit the like button if you've now straightened your back after realizing you were slouching. More often than not, animals born with scoliosis adapt to living with this condition. It may not be a cause for concern, but it's still worth taking a look at. In snakes, scoliosis manifests itself in a very unusual way. 
As you can see in the image, the spine has an almost helical structure. A gecko with scoliosis looks as if it's played twister and lost. When looking at fish suffering from this condition, it may seem as if someone took a chunk out of it. I'd also like to mention equine lordosis, a condition used to describe a strong curvature of the spine in horses. Typically, this condition is seen in older horses or pregnant mares carrying more than one foal. This is because lordosis puts a significant strain on the spine, which can be a health hazard. Additionally, young horses may also be affected by lordosis due to their genetic predisposition. But don't worry, no matter how frightening the curvature may look, the animal isn't suffering. Lordosis in horses does not necessarily result in pain or discomfort, and with proper care, these animals can live healthy lives despite the shocking way they look. See you later.